Grief tonight in the aftermath of a heart-wrenching act of violence at a Louisiana movie theater. Now as a disturbing picture comes to light about an isolated and angry gunman who took the lives of two innocent young women and his own, many are questioning why someone with his history had access to firearms in the first place. ABC's Tom Yamas is on the scene. A horrifying tragedy in a place most people feel safe. I saw him standing. He's wearing a hat, a big jacket, and I could just see his you know, hand going in a semicircle and the lights coming. A night at the movies turning deadly. You hear the first shot and at first your initial reaction is that it's not a gun because it would never be a gun. Not here. To realize this is real. This guy is shooting everyone in the theater and he was so close to us. Tonight, new details emerging of the shooter, 59-year-old John Russell Hauser, of his victims, two dead and nine wounded, and of the terrifying moments after he opened fire inside this Lafayette movie theater. It all began last night. He walked in just like any other patron, purchased a ticket to watch the movie. It didn't set off any alarms with anybody. Hauser attending the 710 screening of the movie Trainwreck, sitting alone at the back of the theater. At 7.30, he started shooting. Emily Mann sitting just feet away from the alleged gunman. Something clicked in your brain that, that said run. Mm -hmm. When did that moment happen? The second shot. When it wasn't just one, when it wasn't a firecracker. Confusion and chaos as Hauser fires at least 13 rounds from a 40 caliber handgun. I was down between the seat in front of me and my seat and you already feel stuck, but you have to get out. Emily crawled her way to safety. By the time I got to the bottom of the stairs, a woman pulled me around. She probably got me out of there three or four seconds faster than I would have by myself. She stayed there another second for me. And there were other heroes. Teachers Gina Moe and Allie Martin, there together. When the shooting started, Gina threw her body between the gun and her friend, taking a bullet but saving Allie's life. Allie then jumping into action herself, pulling the fire alarm. The second teacher had the presence of mind to pull that fire alarm. Who knows how many lives were saved just by that presence of mind. Outside the auditorium, panic in the multiplex. 300 people desperate to get out. We were running out of the lobby past people in line getting popcorn. Even the guy taking tickets was all normal, and we were running out of there. The whole group of people, teenagers mainly, running out telling everybody to run for their life. And then we saw a lady with uh, blood all over her leg. I just grabbed my child, and we, I mean, we just all ran. Police respond in less than a minute. Within 60 seconds or less, we had four officers uh, who made entry into the theater to engage. Hauser's 1995 Blue Lincoln Continental parked right outside the theater exit door, his keys on top of a tire. We feel that when he spotted those officers, he retreated back into the, uh, the theater, and that's when he uh, self-inflicted. A certain level of planning went into this. He stayed in the theater approximately 20 minutes and parks his car outside for a getaway. His vehicle had a switched uh, license tag on it. He was staying at a local motel on University Avenue. We served a search warrant on that motel room at about 4.30 this morning. We found uh, wigs and glasses and disguises basically in his room. Authorities say Hauser was a lone wolf who was estranged from his wife and family and constantly on the move. Previously resided in the state of Alabama. He's kind of a drifter. He's been in Lafayette since early July, as far as we can tell. He was educated, politically active, even running for public office in Georgia. I think he portrayed himself as a uh, community watchdog against government. Hauser is also believed to have a history of mental illness and domestic violence. Court documents describe him as showing signs of manic depression and bipolar disorder. According to authorities, Hauser applied for a concealed gun permit as far back as 2006. That permit was denied and in 89 or 90, he was arrested for an arson case in Columbus, Georgia. In 2008, family members filed a temporary order of protection against Hauser after he made threats against his daughter's fiance. Hauser's wife was so worried about his behavior that she removed all guns from their house. He's mad at the world. He blames the world, perhaps, for his plight in life. But perhaps the biggest red flag of the violence to come was his active presence online. Hauser apparently posting dozens of messages on anti-government, neo-Nazi forums. 
citing Hitler as being the most successful that ever lived. He also chillingly writes, you must realize the power of the lone wolf is the power that comes forth in all situations. Look within yourselves. The lone wolves are people who are not formally affiliated with uh, organized groups who usually carry out attacks without affiliating with other people. This is just the latest in a string of mass killings. Define when there are four or more victims. According to a USA Today timeline, there have been more than 200 reported mass killings since 2006. By coincidence, That's President awesome. Obama expressing his disappointment hours before the shooting in an interview with the BBC. If you ask me where has been the, the, the one area where I feel that uh, I've been most frustrated and most stymied, uh, it is the fact that uh, the United States of America is the one advanced nation on earth in which we do not have sufficient common sense gun safety laws. Despite having been accused of various crimes and a history of mental instability, Hauser was apparently able to buy his gun legally at an Alabama pawn shop. Since the devastating Newtown massacre that killed 20 children and six adults, eight states have passed laws requiring background checks. There have been a total of 242 new firearm state laws passed in the last two years. Of those laws, 99 tighten gun restrictions, but 88 of the laws actually expand the rights of gun owners. Louisiana ranks fifth for the weakest gun laws in the country. Tonight, this Louisiana community, recently named one of the five happiest places in America, remembering its victims. Macy Bro, just 21 years old, she was studying to become a radio technician. She was scheduled to begin radiology school uh, here uh, at Lafayette General. It hurts for our staff. And 33-year-old mother and musician Jillian Johnson, her husband posting, she was the love of my life and I will miss her always. Of the nine injured, tonight five still remain in the hospital. For Nightline, I'm Tom Yamas in Lafayette, Louisiana. Our thanks to Tom Yamas. ABC News will, of course, continue to cover this story.